So hi and welcome back to another Tech Tuesday. It's been a while and today we're going to be taking a look at this Zowie S2 Divina here. So after this review there should be nothing that you have left to wonder what this mouse is about. I'm going to go through all the detail I normally would do where I'll tell you the shape details. I'm going to show you the force required to press mouse buttons and push it across a standard G64 mouse pad. We'll go through the weight, the size dimensions. So once you've Watch this video, you should know everything about this mouse to make a good decision on whether this is right for you or not. These reviews will be nothing like anything else you've seen unless you're already following me. Thank you for that, much appreciated, because I go into a little bit more detail than most reviewers would do. I don't just read through the box. I'm going to basically try and break down every little bit of detail that we can here. If you haven't already, check out my beardedbob.com website where I've got mouse comparisons, mouse pad comparisons, and some other detail and different reviews. If you want to catch up and say compare this S2 to say a Zowie FK or a ZA or a Final Mouse, I'll give you some of the basic comparisons to help you decide a little bit easier if you're looking for a certain characteristic from a mouse, say. So let's get into it. So let's start for the price. Well, this starts at $69.99 UK pounds and it's the same in dollars. It's certainly in that mid to high range, but it's not that expensive against something like a G Pro wireless. So it's certainly still affordable. To give you an idea of my hand size, my hand size is 18 centimeters by nine centimeters. And I've got a thumb of five centimeters. And this will give you help now with the shape to give you an idea whether this mouse would fit you or not. So the shape here, and Zara is renowned for this, is very good. It's got a traditional shape with a hump about three quarters of the way back, but it does have a slightly flat profile on the top of this mouse. It doesn't drop off or it doesn't steep up too early. It's got a nice flat profile, which allows you to rest your palm on it very well. The left and right mouse button are built into the shell. They're not independent. It also has some nice comfort curves here that are quite significant and give you a good feel into the mouse. There's a little bit of a drawback here that I can see, and this is they have like a flared edge coming up, which if you gently take your finger off the mouse button and maybe put it to the side, you might catch it on the return, but nothing too significant. It didn't cause me any problems, but it's something to bear in mind. This mouse comes in two sizes. There's an S1 and an S2. This is the S2. This is a smaller one. The S1 is slightly bigger and they reckon about 126 millimeters in length. This one's around 120 millimeters. But we'll measure that in a bit just to confirm it. This shaped mouse is predominantly for right-handed players, although I don't see why a left-handed player couldn't use it. The only drawback for them is that the buttons will be on the left hand side of the mouse for their little finger, whereas a right handed player would use their thumb. But the shape is even other than that across the board. Some of the things I've been noticing while checking out the Reddit forum mouse review, which is good and well worth checking out, there'll be a link in the description as there will be for everything else in this video, is that the coating people are a little bit undecided on. Now, I certainly had problems with the G Pro wireless. Certainly found that to be very slippy and I expected the S2 to be similar with this glossy coating, but actually I found this to be quite a sticky coating for me, but I do have quite dry hands. If you had like a hot hand or you're working, you know, it was quite hot outside, you might find this to be a little bit slippy, but for me it was certainly okay. If you do find that and you want to take the coating off, there are some good guides on the mouse review site, so check them out. You can tell to take the coating off without damaging the mouse too much, but it will void your warranty. There's no RGB lighting on this mouse. It's got printed logos. It's got one on the rear and one on the side that says BenQ. There's a blue version that I've got here, baby blue version, and there's also a pink version. The scroll wheel has little ridges in them, which are nice to feel, and it's got a nice soft rubber. The cable on these is gray, which is a bit unusual. I'm used to seeing black cables. I think most of the stuff I've got is black, apart from some older mice. So that's a slightly different change here. Might play around with your setup a little bit. On the rear of the mouse, there are two dedicated buttons. There is a DPI button. And there is also a pull rate button. These dedicated buttons are nice because some Zari mice you need to hold down, say, the left mouse button and plug it in to select a certain DPI or a certain pull rate. 
and Zari have moved away from that now using dedicated buttons on the bottom that don't interfere and you can't accidentally press them like you can do on some mice. So the build quality on this mouse is superb. I could not find a flaw on this thing. If I was being really picky, the BenQ logo at really high res camera, you can see some dots on it. It's not printed that well. But overall, the build quality, there's no rattles, squeaks, nothing. This thing is solid as a rock. Can't squeeze it. And overall, it's a very, very good mouse and very well built. So now we're over and done with the build quality and the shape. Let's get into some more of these more tests kind of scientific stuff. And let's take a look at the sensor first. So what I did was I performed my usual tests here for the mice, things like jitter tests, line tests, and give you an idea of how this 3360 sensor performed. I found that at 400 dpi, this sensor performed really well. It felt very, very nice. I felt as I got into 800, particularly on a cloth mat, which is unusual. I did find it performed a little bit more difficult to control. I found that it could be potentially some cramp in my hands, especially when I was trying to do these tests, not particularly when I was gaming. And I found it a little bit difficult to control, but on a hard mat, which I was using my Razer Scarab, which I've had for years, it performed really, really well on that. One of the other things that I saw was that it, on a fast lift and press test, it did trail quite far to the left a lot and lost tracking. But really in a real world scenario, you're not going to be lifting your mouse up and pressing the mouse button that much, or I certainly don't. But it's something to consider if you're going to be lifting the mouse a lot and putting it back down. But overall, a 3360 sensor here performed well as expected. I've tested a few of these and nothing really stood out to be an issue. It was a good sensor. So then we moved on to the 3D aim test. I do three tests here and then the one with the highest score I submit. You're welcome to try and compete against me and put your score in the comments. And overall, this performed well. I'm going to make a little bit of a score table to show you what mice I've performed better on to give you an idea. But I got 60,000. 572, which is not a bad score here from this Zowie S2. Overall, I found it nice to aim and track. I didn't find any issues. I also performed some slam tests here in Battlefield 5, and it did not spin out one little bit. This is on the G640 pad. I haven't done it on other pads, but overall, I had no issues with this mouse, and as expected, the 3360 just didn't spin out at all. So I weighed this mouse. Zowie reckon it's 82 grams, and I weighed it 88 grams, which is a bit unusual without any cable or a very little bit of cable. Maybe that little bit of cable is the extra six grams. A bit misleading from Zawi if they don't measure it with the cable on. Who knows? Let me know in the comments if yours weighs a little bit less. And with the cable, it came in at 132 grams, which is pretty normal, really. So the skates, what we did was we took the force meter, as we said here, and we did the usual test that I've been doing on a lot of mouse pads and a lot of different pads for feet and skates. And today we're going to be testing his S2. And what we took was the G640, which I use across the board here at the minute. And we did some tests here to compare how much friction is being generated by the pad. The lower the number, the faster the mouse will travel. So speed and the higher the number, the more control or the more friction being created by the pad. The first test here is going to be sideways. And the first one was 19 grams, 22 grams, 15 grams, giving it an average friction of 19 grams. And then forward, we've got first one at 32 grams, then 30 grams, and then 30 grams again. Gives it an average of 31 grams. Now, if you want to compare these to other mice, go and check out my Birdie Bob website, as I've said, and you'll be able to see whether these standard pads are giving high friction or low friction on the G640 compared to other mice. I'm using some other pads. I've got tons to go through, like the Helios, QCK, QCK Heavy, all the artisan pads and that'll be different tests but for these mouse reviews i'm just going to use the 640 at the minute unless you guys want me to use something else but that'll give us a good baseline to go across and compare the other mice against so let's look at the other thing that makes quite a difference and this is the buttons so this is how s2 is using the on run he's using the Harai hanu so this is how s2 is using the hanu switches which i'm going to do a tear down on it as well as a separate video so make sure you subscribe for that and we're going to look at a little bit more detail, but this is using the Honu switches. I feel these are quite a light switch, and we're going to measure them in a minute to get that confirmed or to show you what they're like against other mice. But the one thing I did find was that under pressure when I was holding the mouse quite tightly, I found that the right mouse button I tend to activate accidentally, which is unusual. I haven't done that in any other mice. My daily run is the G Pro Wireless. I've also used the Zari ZA and I've used a lot of other mice. And this one I just tend to press the mouse button. I don't know if it's that flared side, but it was a little bit unusual. So 
something to bear in mind. So the left side mouse button we'll do first, and let's take a look at the force. So the first result came in at 38 grams, 48 grams, 34 grams, which gives it an average of 40 grams press. Obviously, the smaller the number here, the lighter the button is to press. The middle of the switch or the middle of the button came in at 70 grams, 66 grams, 71 grams, gives it an average of 69 grams. And the rear came in at 91 grams, 88 grams, and 73 grams, giving it an average of 84 grams. Going on to the right hand side button, the front first one was 34 grams, second 38. 34, giving an average of 35 grams. The middle of the right one came in at 67 grams, 71 grams, 59 grams, giving an average of 66 grams. And the rear came in at 99 grams, 103 grams, 107 grams, giving an average of 103 grams. So what I tended to notice here, now we've been doing a lot of these tests, is that the rear of this Zowie, maybe I wasn't far back enough, but the rear was certainly lighter than most mice. Some of those are getting up to 200 grams. So if you're using a bit of a claw grip on this mouse, you might find that this is a bit easier to press and you might get a bit more of a rapid click than you would do another mice. So moving on to the side, the front side one came in at 145 grams, second one 153 grams, and the third one 167 grams. Gives it an average of 155 grams. And the rear side one is 176 grams, 133 grams, 131 grams giving an average 147 grams so again quite light side buttons not too light that you'd accidentally press them though i didn't have any problems there with my thumb and i like the size of these side buttons to be fair they're not easy to miss we get onto the scroll wheel which i find is certainly significant here because if picking a weapon you don't want to be activating it by pushing down and doing something stupid so you want a firm click but you don't want it to be that firm that you nearly break your finger trying to press it so the first scroll wheel press came in at 203 grams, second one 213 grams, and the third one 187 grams, giving it an average of 201 grams, which is about the same as most mice. It wasn't too light, it wasn't too stiff. If you wanted to know how many notches this scroll wheel has, it's got 16 in total. So they're quite long movement. Some of the Logitech ones are around 24 notches. So this one here certainly doesn't have that many rotations. Comes down to personal preference, doesn't it? So how do they feel? Well, the side buttons on this one certainly don't feel spongy. The scroll wheel itself is one of Zowie's weak points and they still haven't improved this on this mouse. I still think this is not a very nice scroll wheel. I went back to my G Pro Wireless and it felt 10 tons better. Bye. Did you feel me? Mm-hmm. Still feels gritty and it, to me it needs a bit of an improvement from Zowie here. So how about latency? Well, latency wise, I did a human benchmark, which is Rocket Jump Ninja uses, so you can get a good comparison. And it came in at 175 as the average latency. So pretty normal. They all seem to be around this on all the mice. I also used the bloody tool, I think it's called. And that gave me an average on the left of 162 millisecond and on the right, 175 millisecond. So again, where we'd expect to see it, no latency issues with this mouse. So let's hear what these buttons sound like. So moving on to this next bit of the review, let's look at the size of the mouse and the dimensions. So the length of this mouse came in at 121.2 millimeters. The rear width comes in at 64 millimeters. The middle top comes in at 58.3 millimeters. The middle bottom comes in at 54.9 millimeters. And the front comes in at 60.7 millimeters. So certainly within tolerances of what Zawi had said. The height on the rear comes in at 35.5 millimeters. The middle rear comes in at 37.3 millimeters. And the front comes in at 22.4 millimeters. The button width, which I find useful because sometimes you have fat fingers, mine are a little bit big, comes in at 20.8 millimeters. And that's both left and right, they're both equal on this mouse. 
The scroll wheel thickness is 7.7 millimeters. So it's quite a thick scroll wheel, quite a wide scroll wheel. And the length of it is 20.7 millimeters. So probably an average length, but it's got a bit of girth, should we say. So getting to the end here, the cable on the Zowie mice are very good. I did find this one to be a little bit better than the SA and the FK2 Zowie mice. I find it to be very flexible. Zari probably have the most flexible cable on the market as well. So don't expect too many problems here. Power coordinate is always going to be an advantage, but you know, if you don't want to do that, I don't think you'd have too many issues with this cable. It's made out of rubber, it's two meters long, and it's also 2.5 millimeters thick, so it'll fit into most channels, if not all channels, for things like bungees as well. Software here, and again, a little bit of a gripe for me for Zari Mice, it comes with no software, so you can't easily program the side buttons, for instance. I don't know why they don't add this, because BenQ are a big company, and they probably could do this very easily. A lot of small companies like Dream Machine are doing that now, and Zari, I do feel, should be doing this. To give us a benefit, maybe for like a PlayStation or something, where you could plug this in, though, and you don't need the software, so, you know, maybe an advantage there, perhaps. What I would recommend is something called X-Mouse software and that will allow you to program the side buttons and any of the other buttons to what key commands you'd like them to use, for instance, the down press and the scroll wheel. So my conclusion here is overall, this is a solid mouse that offers a lot of features. It's certainly got a lot of premium components in it. It's got a great shape. The coating is something that is more about your preference. I say it didn't bother me, which I expected it to do. The quality of this is outstanding. It's a really good well-built mouse. It's got a decent sensor. It'd be nice to see some software. Comes in at a reasonable weight and overall a good product here that I certainly would check out if you're looking at some mice in the market. So as always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've tried to be as thorough as possible. Feel free to put in the comments anything that you'd like me to do as additional to this. I'd like to keep these videos a little bit shorter, but it's a lot of information. Hopefully you've stuck around. Put in a comment if you have, because it'd be interesting to see if people have. And I'll see you on the next review. So catch you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.